There is a major shakeup coming to a South LA high school that has underperformed for years. I just heard that the superintendent had made an announcement. I didn't even know who the superintendent was. When Superintendent Ramon Cortinez came on board and he said, I am not going to tolerate any school that has low performance. Well, yesterday he kept that promise by announcing that he would be taking over, LAUSD would be taking over Fremont High School. I remember my teacher pacing back and forth and all of a sudden he told us, hey you guys, Fremont's going to get restructured, all these teachers are going to get fired, we're all going to lose our jobs. The teachers union is not happy with this move. Union leaders say Cortinas is blaming the teachers for Fremont's failure when the real issue affecting Fremont is poverty. It was chaotic because like we start having sit-ins in schools, like the teachers and, the teachers and students, they performed a sit-in in school, they was talking about all different things that they wanted to happen. Oh. Fremont high school students and teachers stand ready to fight the LAUSD. A plan is moving forward to improve academic achievement that includes having teachers and staff members reapply for their jobs. I can see just the teachers and the administration and the district just fighting with another and blaming each other for, you know, the reason why Fremont was underperforming and it was um, had low test scores for the past couple of years. They were just blaming each other. They were saying it was a teacher's fault for not teaching well, and it was, they were saying it was a school's fault for not having proper programs. So it was just a fight going back and forth. So I was, I felt left out. I felt frustrated and confused about the administrators and teachers not asking us or me, how do we feel about it? I had something to say, and they just didn't want to hear what we had to say. They didn't really care about what the students wanted, what they felt was needed at Fremont. One way or another, we weren't being heard. We weren't being included, and so we started doing it the right way. We started organizing. We started um, getting our peers involved. We started reaching out to them and asking them what it is that they wanted to see at Fremont. And we let them know that this was an opportunity to make our school better for us. One thing that we did was we had surveys. So we was able to tally up how many students wanted this, why did they want it. In the surveys, we got the top six demands, and that's where we came up with our top three demands for Fremont. We came up with three solutions um, for our campaign, and we wanted a wellness center to fit the emotional needs of students and help them cope with the stresses in their life. The second was the Health Career Academy, where students would be able to get hands-on training um, at hospitals and get internships there and they could decide if they wanted to go to college or get a job in the medical field right after high school. In the dropout program, we want them, want the, we want the dropouts to come back to school and get education so they can get a better job, so they can help their families. Our campaign actually was six months long, and in those six months, we outreached, we had several meetings on campus, we had community meetings where we had parents and students come and community members come and they made a wish list on what they wanted to see at Fremont. We had activities during lunch, they were health and wellness related activities, so we had martial arts, dance and graffiti, so it was a, a sample of what students could get at their school. A lot of students have a lot of creativity with doing graffiti, so if we had it at school, then they stay in school instead of showing their artwork on people's houses, on cars, on windows. So we decided to have a, a really big meeting with Superintendent Ramon Cortinez to voice our demands and tell him how we felt about the restructuring at Fremont. And we wanted to show him that there are students who care and there are parents who care. We wanted him to hear the students' voice, to hear our side of the story, because it's always two sides of the story. We voiced our concerns to Ramon Cortinez, and it was really tense because we didn't know if he was gonna either accept our, our demands or reject them. Uh, the answer is yes to all three of you. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to say yes because like, a lot of adults don't really pay attention to students. I felt really accomplished, not only myself, but my, my peers, because all of Sayah, we had all worked together, we had worked for months. Our hard work paid off, and I felt that I was capable of doing anything. If I can win this campaign along with my peers, I can win just about, just about anything, and it gave me hope. Organizing is so important because with only one person, you will not make a change. So you have to go and outreach to other people. So Fremont was just the first of multiple South LA schools to be restructured. And I'd like to tell other students to voice their concerns, step up, and talk about the issues at your school. 
Youth are powerful. That's the most powerful voice like um, you can possibly hear. Youth voices, and you have to make sure that this, you know, um, decision makers hear us out because at the end of the day, it's you know, it's us who will be taking their jobs. Make sure that your voice is heard because if it's not, then it's not going to be a change at your school at all. So follow in our footsteps and make a change at your school.